in previous class, we have learned about what kind of diffusion will control the growth of ferrite in the tunnel system. So I told you there is two kind of local equilibrium. One is partitioning local equilibrium, which permit the diffusion of the substitutional element. And the second one is negligible partition local equilibrium. Of course, in negligible partition local equilibrium, diffusion of the substitution along element occurs. But you have to note that the partitioning, which means redistribution of the substitution along element is negligible because the supersaturation during the growth is almost one. And today, let's start to think about the width of the diffusion, the dimension for the diffusion in case of the negligible local partitioning, uh, lo negligible partition local equilibrium. <clears throat> when we consider the distribution of the concentration in the of the substitution alloy element, we can think that the sub let's assume that the 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 concentration this is the concentration of the substitution element in ferrite and this is the concentration of the dead element at the interface of the austenite side and C0 is the initial concentration then let's convert the concentration C with a normalized value, C prime, by consider considering this normalized with this amount of the difference in the concentration. So here we would like to normalize C with C and minus C zero and C minus C zero. Then we can redraw we redraw the concentration gradient with C prime, then this length will be one. because we normalize C with this distance. So deviation from this distance is now normalized and the distance between these two lines will be one, right? Like this one. Okay. Then, the length of the diffusion length here F can be approximated with reciprocal of the concentration gradient. Here the concentration gradient is the gradient of C prime with respect to the distance x, right? So we can write down like this. And when you consider the first derivative of C prime with x, you can obtain this and a prime And 
exactly the same one with this one. Okay. When you consider the concentration gradient, this from the flux balance equation, you can write down concentration gradient like this and just put this one into this equation and you can obtain this one. So the diffusion length of the substitution order element is B over V and ratio of this difference in the concentration. So then when you consider the negligible partitioning local equilibrium, then C0 will be close to CP because at MPRI condition, the supersaturation should be close to 1 which means that C0 is close to CP, right? Just remember. Oh, here. Just remember, with MPRA condition, C0 is close to CP, right? So finally, you can obtain that the diffusion length will be close to D over V. Yeah, v is the velocity of the interface. So now you can understand this diffusion length in MPL condition is close to D over V. Sometimes when you calculate the interface velocity with given diffusivity of the mangan silicon or other substitution only element, the width of this D of V is calculated to be less than the lattice parameter. If this length become less than the lattice parameter, there is no critical meaning of the negligible partitioning local equilibrium concept. Because if you want to define the gradient, concentration gradient, there should be at least a few layers of the atom. So if the calculation result is less than the lattice parameter, there is no physical meaning in MPRE condition. So at that condition, we can assume there is no redistribution, no diffusion of the substitutional alloy element during the growth of the ferrite. That is the concept of the para-equilibrium. So when we consider the power equilibrium, we just assume there is no movement of the of the substitutional alloy element. Only the diffusion of the carbon is permitted. So when we when you look at the movement of this interface the ratio of the substitution alloy element and ratio of the lattice element like iron, mangan, silicon, the ratio of those kind of lattice element is the same in everywhere. It is similar to assumes 
we freeze the lattice structure. Not structure, lattice composition. Structure is changes from FCC to BCC, but the concentration is the same. But carbon can diffuse, carbon can move Actually, those kind of concept, power equilibrium, is not a real equilibrium because we do not consider the balance, the equilibrium of the chemical potential of the iron in austenite and iron in ferrite, mangan in austenite in mangan in ferrite. We just consider the balance of the carbon, chemical potential of carbon only. But even though we do not consider the equilibrium of the chemical potential, equilibrating the chemical potential between two pays, we have another restriction, which comes from we fix the composition of the iron and mangan in both sides. So, considering the power equilibrium is exactly the same to considering the equilibrium of the binary alloy, where one is the carbon and one is the imaginary element which has the character of the mixture of iron and another substitution alloy element like mangan or silicon. So when you calculate, when you want to calculate the power equilibrium, you just consider the equilibrium of the chemical potential of carbon and imaginary element X and the chemical potential of imaginary element X is represented by the mixture of iron and mangan or silicon or chromium nickel, something like that. And here, Y is the site fraction, not mole fraction. Site fraction means that the fraction in the lattice side let this side. So When we calculate the side fraction, we eliminate the contribution of carbon, which occupy the interstitial side, because we only, our consideration is only focused on the lattice side. Okay? So with this, with this relationship, it might be not that difficult to derive this relationship. So with these two equations, we can evaluate the concentration of the carbon mangan ion at the interface of the ferrite side and austenite side. Just remember that we, because we handle the binary system, we convert the ternary into the binary system. So if we have these two equation, we can evaluate, we can get the interface composition.
So construction of the power equilibrium phase boundary, which defines the, the chemical concentration of the element at the interface, we can use the, this free energy curve because we confine our interest with a fixed ratio of iron and, for example, mangan. So this is the ternary system and just cut this ternary free energy diagram with fixed ratio of iron and the third substitution element. And this is this vertical cut of this three dimensional free energy diagram. Then you can obtain this kind of 2D section of free energy curve. And just constructing the tie line, uh, the, the, the common tangent on this two free energy curve, then you can obtain the page boundary of the power equilibrium. If you focused on the point H and G, here this orange plane is the tangent plane at point G of the free energy curve of gamma and cut the free energy curve of ferrite with this section. So this intersection of this orange plane with each vertical axis will give the chemical potential of carbon, iron, and for example, mangan at austenite, which is in equilibrium state, para-equilibrium state with the iron, mangan, and carbon in ferrite. Here, this blue plane indicate the plane contact with H, point H, with ferrite free energy curve and cut the free energy curve of austenite at this blue section. So when you compare the chemical potential of the carbon and iron and mangan in austenite and ferrite, then the chemical potential of carbon is the same in austenite and ferrite. And when you consider this, this triangle and this triangle, then you can understand the chemical potential of iron and mangan in austenite and ferrite will have this relationship. <clears throat> so, by sectioning of this 3D free energy curve with fixed given ratio of iron and the substitution along element, you can construct. the para-equilibrium phase boundary, like this broken line. So this solid line, this solid line is real equilibrium line, which considering full equilibrium of carbon, mangan, and iron in the ternary system. Considering full equilibrium means that the chemical potential of carbon, mangan, and iron in ferrite and that of in austenite is the same. The condition to construct this solid line means full, we consider the full equilibrium. But when you see this broken line, which represent the power equilibrium, 
it consider the equilibrium, the, 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 it consider the equilibrium of the chemical potential of carbon in both sides. But another condition is the equilibrium of imaginary element X rather than the full equilibrium. So you have to consider the power equilibrium itself is not a full equilibrium. It is kind of pseudo equilibrium. So that's why when you consider the power equilibrium, it has its own phase boundary. <clears throat> and when you look at the tie line in the power equilibrium, the tie line is always horizontal. Okay? So, when you consider the partition of local equilibrium or negligible partition of local equilibrium, both concept based on the full equilibrium state, which is called also, also equilibrium, also means that true. So the region of the gross mode of the par uh, partitioning local equilibrium or negligible partitioning local equilibrium divide <coughs> the full equilibrium phase diagram. The region located in real phase diagram. But when you consider the para equilibrium, it has its own phase boundary which is not related to the, the equilibrium phase diagram. When you look at these two points, this one and this one, both phase boundary coincide to each other because this line means ion carbon binary system. So in ion carbon binary system, there is no difference between the para equilibrium and also equilibrium. There is no substitution of an element. So that's why these two points coincide to each other. When you look at this vertical line, the phase boundary of para equilibrium merges to one point. For example, let's consider ion mangan binary system. When we consider the ion mangan binary system in terms of power equilibrium concept, there is only one element, right? Imaginary element X. So there is no two page region. That's why these two line merges in one point at this axis. Okay. No question? So let's talk about, let's think about another diffusional transformation and polite transformation in steel. 
when the second phase precipitate in the parent's phase, usually the shape is a round shape because that round shape can minimize the surface interface. But sometimes we can observe the second phase precipitate like a plate type along the grain boundary of the parent's phase. So this and form this kind of cellular structures. Here, the original parent space is alpha one, and as the plate type precipitate beta grows, then it consists of alternating layer of beta and alpha two, and beta and alpha two. Here, alpha two has the same crystal structure with the parent space, alpha one, but due to the precipitation of the beta, the chemical concentration and also the lattice parameter is different from it, its original pace. This kind of <coughs> transformation is called cellular transformation. And sometimes it is called discontinuous transformation because there is a drastic discontinuity of the chemical potential of uh, the chemical concentration between alpha and alpha 2 at this boundary and this boundary. In iron, as you know, there are similar, there are transformations similar to the cellular transformation. When you cool down the, for example, we consider, well, let's, let's consider the iron carbon binary system. When the alloy contains 0.77 weight percent of carbon, and when you heat up to austenite, uh, heat up to higher temperature, or where the austenite phase is stable and cool down, then the austenite decompose into ferrite and cementite. And the shape of ferrite cementite is the alternating layer of ferrite and cementite and ferrite and cementite. Here, this micrograph shows the partly, partially transformed the polite nodule. Here, this is the front, growing front of the polite, and this is the martensite, which was austenite at higher temperatures. So this, this micro structures can, uh, can be obtained during, by, by interlocked quenching during the isothermal transformation. So this region is untransformed region, and this region is transformed region from the austenite. So you can see the alternating layer, which is called lamella structures. When the austenite initial alloy has 0.77 carbon content, then will correspond to this line, right? So when we heat up the sample and cool down, then the polite, which means the lamella structure, ferrite and cementite, ferrite and cementite, can form along the fresh austenite grain boundary. So either cementite or either ferrite can form first. But anyway, if let's see the cementite is the first forming phase, then the surrounding of this cementite will be deficient in carbon because cementite absorbs the carbon around it. So the surrounding will be a good place for the nucleation of the ferrite. So this kind of surrounding 
is proper site for the nucleation of the ferrite. So we can have this kind of layered structures. At first, <coughs> people thought that the alternating layer forms the repetition of those kind of nucleation. But nowadays, people understand that the orientation of this ferrite and this ferrite and this, this, this ferrite and orientation of all of the cementite in one nodule of the polite has almost the same crystallographic orientation. So those kind of event will not be possible when every layer is nucleated separately. So now people thought that this kind of layered structures formed by branching. Branching means that sometimes glow and divided and divided and divided. Branching of the growing plate rather than or repetition of the nucleation. When the original composition is deviated from this detectoid composition, then the grain boundary of the austenite firstly decorated with pro-detectoid product. When the carbon con content is less than 0.77, then the pro-detectoid product will be ferrite. And ferrite preferentially, preferentially forms according uh, along the austenite grain boundary. When the carbon content is higher than 0.77, then the cementite, protectoid cementite will cover most of the austenite grain boundary. So at that case, the interface between austenite and protectoid product will be nucleation site for the polite. And when you look at the orientation of the polite, the orientation of the cementite and ferrite in the polite, there is a always orientation relationship between the ferrite and cementite, which is called Bagaria's key orientation relationship or pitch patch orientation relationship. But one thing you have to remember is there is no established orientation relationship between parent austenite and ferrite or parents of the night and satellite. <clears throat> so, as you know, the polite transformation is a kind of reconstructive transformation which requires the diffusion. So let's limit our discussion in iron carbon binary system. So for the growth of the polite, the diffusion of carbon is necessary. Recalling the growth of the ferrite, With the movement of this interface, with the movement of this ferrite austenite interface, due to the difference in the solubility of the carbon, the carbon should be rejected from the ferrite to austenite side, and the carbon should be diffused out from the interface that diffusion of carbon control the growth rate. How about in transformation? 
of the polite. Here, this is cementite, and this is ferrite, and this is cementite, and this is austenite. So, what will be the flux of the carbon for the growth of the polite? Yeah, what should be the flux? Here, the carbon flux should be ferrite to austenite for the growth of ferrite. How, how it should be in the growth of polite? Remember, polite consists of ferrite and cementite. And ferrite should reject carbon. And cementite should absorb it. So for the growth of this interface to this direction, the carbon in ferrite should be transported to its neighboring cementite. Right? So when you consider the transport of carbon, from the ferrite to the cementite, there is two ways. <coughs> One way is carbon diffusion through the austenite lattice. The second one is carbon diffusion through the interface between austenite and polite. Okay? So let's consider these two cases for the invest for the evaluation of the growth of the polite. <clears throat> At first, let's consider how much of carbon will be rejected from the ferrite and how much is absorbed how much should be absorbed to the cementite. Here, this is cementite, ferrite, and cementite. And the lamella spacing is S, and the width of the cementite is SCM, and the width of the ferrite is SRPA. Here, V is the growing rate of the polite nodule. And H is a uh, proper depth perpendicular to this screen. H is proper depth perpendicular to this screen. Then, with the movement of this interface with velocity V, this amount of carbon should be rejected from the ferrite, right? Here, we product with this solubility difference. And this H product S alpha is the area sweep by the movement of the interface. So this will be the carbon rejected from the ferrite and Similarly, this should be the amount of carbon absorbed by the cementite. OK? So when we're eliminating the C0, which is original composition, original carbon concentration, we will have uh, this equation. And with combining these two ones, the width of ferrite and width of cementite can be representing by as a function of total lamella spacing and the concentration of the carbon in cementite and alpha and original concentration. Here, Cm slash gamma is 
concentration of carbon in cementite, which is contact with austenite. Okay, it, the carbon in ferrite, which is contact in austenite. So those amount of carbon should be transported with the diffusion. So at first, let's consider the diffusion through the austenite lattice. Here is the amount. So this is the fixed first law, right? And this S alpha divided by 2 and H is the dimension where the diffusion flux occurs. Here, we assume that the flux of carbon occurred within S alpha divided by 2, this region. And the carbon flux outside of this region is ignored. It's reasonable because the carbon diffusion should be occurs near the interface, right? There is no reason carbon go out and come again. It's not reasonable, right? So we confine our interest in this layer. So when we consider the gradient of carbon in front of the interface is will be the carbon concentration in austenite with contact with alpha and the carbon concentration in cementite, uh, austenite in contact with cementite. Because the carbon ferrite will reject carbon, this value will be higher than this value because cementite absorbed carbon and ferrite reject carbon. So the gradient along this line, this vertical line will be given by this one. So when you put this concentration gradient into this equation and combining it with equation two here, you will obtain this velocity. So the velocity of the polite is a function of diffusivity and the concentration in carbon in austenite which contact with the polite and the concentration of carbon in cementite and ferrite and the interlamellar spacing. Here, one thing you have to consider is that this carbon concentration. Can we put the carbon concentration in austenite contact with ferrite from the equilibrium value? Can we put the equilibrium value of carbon in austenite which contact with ferrite or which contact with cementite, we can put those value, equilibrium value to this equation. Why? If not, why? If we can put the equilibrium value of the austenite, carbon in austenite, for example,
if we can put the equilibrium value, this value will come from the extended line extended the line of the equilibrium of ferrite and austenite. And this value can obtain from the extended value of the equilibrium of austenite and cementite. Cementite is around here. Right? So that will be very easy. But unfortunately, we have to consider one more thing. <clears throat> when the polite forms from austenite, there will be the, the transformation will make interface between ferrite and cementite. So when you consider the structure of the polite, there will be always interface between the ferrite and cementite. So those kind of transformation inevitably involves the formation of interface, which consumes driving force. So if all of the driving force is consumed by the diffusion, then we can pick up the interface composition from the phase diagram directly from the equilibrium value. But some part of the driving force is used to make the interface the con concentration at the interface deviate. That is similar to the contribution of interface reaction. As I told you at the beginning of the diffusional growth, when the growth is totally controlled by diffusion, then the interface composition is given by the equilibrium concentration. But when we need uh, some driving force for atom to move to across the interface, that will consume some part of driving force, and the interface composition will deviate it from the equilibrium value. Can you remember it? No? So the similar situation occurs when we consider the interface composition of the polite. OK, I will talk this issue in next class. And any question? No? Okay, then see you in next...